first of all, a little bit of admin for you. This will be the last Football Manager show of the year before we're all off to Christmas to, well, play Football Manager but wearing Santa hats and gorging ourselves on our particular vices. We'll be back in the new year, but we're going to leave you with a hamper full of FM goodies to see you through December. On this episode, we've gathered a real brains trust of some of the finest FM minds to give you the first chapter in a trilogy of tactical talk-throughs to make this game just that little bit easier. Last week, we welcomed friend of the show CJ Ramson from Sports Interactive onto the pod to tell everyone about the winter update for FM23. Well, CJ's back, but this time he's brought a colleague along for a supersized sports interactive section. CJ Ramson, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. Happy to be back. Very happy to have you back. You're literally part of the furniture now, CJ. <laughs> and Jack Serres, welcome to the Football Manager Show. Thank you, Tony. Uh, pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you in as well. So, Jack, first of all, for uh, our loyal listeners, can you tell everyone what it is you do all day? <laughs> so I suppose, in short, I play Foot Manager all day. That's, uh, that's was the, the long and short of it. Um, my main role is a QA tester. I work uh, basically underneath CJ and I test the, uh, the match engine um, with all the various things that, that we look at. And also the, uh, the stats area of the game, which has had quite a big um, evolution, I would say, this year. It's probably gone a bit under the radar, actually, a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the main two things I do. But then apart from that, I also do make my own FM content and I read as much feedback as I can all day on the forums and on, and on Twitter. OK, so we'll get to formations in a bit, but that's not the first thing we're going to have to choose, OK? We're going to talk tactical styles. Now, three variety of styles to talk about. I'm going to give you one each to present to us. Control possession, direct counter-attack, and wing play. CJ, do you want to take us off? Do you want to start us on control possession? Yes, no, happily. Um, it's actually one of my favourite styles, personally. It's a little bit underrated, but I feel if you have the right players, um, technically gifted players, players that have good mental attributes as well to make good decisions and good composure, you can really make the most of it. It's not as possession-heavy as Tiki Taka, but it still has a focus on keeping the ball, building out the back and creating chances through shorter passing play. Mm, okay, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, for direct counter-attack, Jack, I'm going to come to you. Talk us through direct counter-attack on a very basic level. Yes, yeah, so you're set up to not have the ball as much as the opposition, generally speaking. Obviously, that will dictate on your players versus their players, that kind of stuff. Um, you're going to be sitting back and looking to leave one or two players up on while your team is defending so you can hit them on the counter-attack. You're trying to get the opposition effectively to overexpose themselves and overcommit players forward, then you hit them on on the counter attack and I think the one thing if I was to give one point to it I would make sure that your what at least one of your forwards is good in the air because in FM in particular if you're defending deep they'll tend to clear it to the to the furthest forward rather than just always into space and for the times they pick out to clear it to the forward if that's a, a Jamie Vardy type player that might be coming back right in your direction again but if it's like a well Harlem would be, would be amazing but anything that <laughs> profile of plenty but if it's in that sort of physical profile would be I think worthwhile to have as well in your team for that. Mm, excellent stuff. And Aaron, I'm going to give you wing play. Oh, wing play. Well, if you've got pacey wide players, then this tactical style, <laughs> we will be for you, sorry. Um, one thing I've noticed about this uh, tactical style in central areas, especially central defence and central midfield, if you've got a central player that likes to switch the ball into those wider areas, then he can be very handy getting the ball out to those wider players. And possibly you want a target in the middle as well, up front, similar to what Jack said as well, you kind of want that vocal point. So when the ball is out wide and they're whipping in crosses, you want them to aim for someone, not necessarily a target forward, but he he should be decent in the air. If you're using a four four two, at least one of your strikers <laughs> should be decent in the air. Mm. And obviously it is uh, worth remembering as well, if you are sort of brand new to the game and you're looking at these tactical styles on the tactics page of the game, there is descriptions in there as to what these tactical styles are, how they'll work in your game, and more importantly, 
they'll give you a couple of suggested formations to work with. Now, Aaron, you just said there a four four two possibly for a wing player. My, of course, eyes lit up straight away. You know, I love a bit of four four two wing player. Um, what what else? What else would you maybe expect to see in a, in a wing player tactic? And we'll bounce it back around with the, with the, yourselves as well with these other styles. I would say just nice balance. I think out of possession, you may defend cautiously, so I doubt you'd be high pressing and you possibly in a mid to low block. But then in possession, you may be taking a lot of risk trying to get the ball into those wider areas. So you're stretching the play, making sure the pitch is big as possible. And that can result into more direct passing. So it's fairly risky in possession, but then out of possession, you're kind of balancing it out being a little bit more cautious mm, okay cautious cj control possession are we talking four at the back five at the back or are we packing that midfield <laughs> so you can actually play with both um you can go five at the back like you see a lot of big teams do nowadays and try and get your wide wing backs high up the pitch creating chances from wide high areas or you can go four at the back play out of defense get a single pivot in midfield with a defensive midfielder and try and get them to kind of dictate play with a deep line playmaker or someone of that type. Usually you'd go with one striker as well, just to get extra bodies in the midfield, so you have more players to build through the lines and build up the pitch with. But um, there's a variety of actual formations you can play with the style, and a lot of it is just about suiting your personnel and what works for them. If you have motor your talent in central midfield areas you might want to go with an extra midfielder if wide players are your your best area and you want to get those in behind you might go over inside forward and the wide areas to try and get your final pass to break the lines with them and get those players in behind mm, okay excellent stuff and if we're breaking lines with that direct counter-attack jack how many men am i committing forward with this am i throwing throwing everyone forward am i going with two up front three up front four up front <laughs> four B would be incredible uh, I think uh, Jose Mourinho said it said it best one time somebody asked about his defensive or low block football they said um, is he primarily focused on just not conceding goals and he said no in football you must always look to scoring one goal and defend the other there's always two goals in football I think that's that's very important for any sort of like out of possession first style which would, this would be classed as so for me personally I'd always go with, with two strikers if possible there's a couple of ways you could probably do it, like a 4-4-2, or even like a 4-2-3-1, having like a shadow strike or something like that. Or even like a 3-5-2, uh, maybe with like two pivots and a, and a 10 to support the striker, just so that when you're hitting that ball forwards, they need support quickly. Because if they don't have support quickly and you just keep countering, you're just going to get hit back on the on the attack, counter attack yourself just when you keep fizzing it into the forwards and they get outnumbered because there's no support and it comes right back. So I think that's just, that's the most important thing, is just think about the numbers you've got supporting. But I generally, I would say... You want you want three in the attack, so it does have mean doesn't mean you have to have three forwards, but you know, be two strikers and a and a ten, or two strikers and a, an attacking winger, something like that. I would say. Mm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, also as well, what what I'm hearing a lot of at this in this uh, this discussion here is is in possession and out of possession. Now, I guess you know. In theory, that's that's relatively easy to understand, but of course we'll break it down. Um, so if we look at it in possession, then Jack, what's the most important thing we need to look about in terms of in possession tactics for any of these styles, really? I think balance is always the key. I think there's a tendency in FM for people to go overboard with how many players they commit forwards because maybe they feel like previously they didn't get punished for it. So people tend to have both wingbacks on attack, that kind of stuff. I think balance is always important because... Whatever style you're doing, whether it's if you're in possession, if you're like a possession-based style, you don't want to be getting hit on the counter. And then if you're a low block team, you don't want to be countering with not enough players in attack. So I think balance is the most important thing in possession and how you're, how you're committing your attacks. That's what I would say. Mm. And it's, of course, in FM23, it's all risk and reward. Isn't that right, CJ? So you're looking at these transitions now. <laughs> what do we need to be looking out for? Jack's in there. Don't commit too many men forward who can't control the ball. Is that one of those things? <laughs> Well, you'd hope you have players that can control the ball if you're playing controlled possession. It's one of the key, <laughs> one of the key factors. Um, like I said earlier, it's a bit of a balance between the tiki-taka style, which is really possession heavy and really short passing, and the gegen press style, which is a lot more higher intensity. Um, I'll touch on out of possession after, where you're really trying to win the ball high up the pitch and counter, counter press high up the pitch. So control possession is a bit of a balance in between, um, not committing either way, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So in possession, you're expecting to build through the lines and keep the ball, but maybe 
move it forward a bit quicker than you would if you were playing tiki taka. If you have those wide players that want to make those runs in behind, you would expect them to get the ball from maybe a deep midfielder or a central midfielder or even a number 10. Whereas tiki taka, you might expect to hold on to the ball a little bit longer. And then out of possession, they still press high with um, control possession, but it's not an all out pressing machine that say a Gagan press would be or even um, a fluid counter attack that's another one kind of similar to direct counter attack but a bit more a bit more um, a bit more controlled a bit more like controlled possession than a wing play you could almost say so um, off the ball you're really looking to win the ball depending if you're playing a five or a four but you're still looking to win the ball high still looking for turnovers but it's not as not as aggressive as some of the others. Mm, okay, excellent stuff. And Aaron, out of possession instructions then. We obviously argue this, don't we? You know, a formation is one thing, in possession is another thing, out of possession. Do you want to talk us through it a little bit? I think with wing play, it's kind of down to the manager and the players that you've got at your disposal. I think with wing play, the, the key thing is to get the ball out wide and trying to break down the opponents in those sort of wider areas. So you're looking at overlaps. You're just looking at direct play, even pass into space. If you've got pacey wingers, you know, central players are on the ball. Maybe you want the ball into um, space rather than into your wingers' feet. So when it comes to out of possession, I believe this is actually down to you in which way you want to win the ball. Now, if you're using a preset, it will come with a low block, I believe. And you can just, with all presets, I believe it's just a preset and it's a reference. You can tweak it to suit your team. So if I'm Bayern Munich, for an example, I might not want to use a low block. I might shift this up to a mid block. And it's just still down to you. The main part or the main idea with wing play is just getting the ball out into those wider areas. Mm, excellent. And again, Aaron, you've just said, it's almost like you're reading my mind. You're saying words <laughs> that I'm hearing. Four four two wing play, low block. Oh, Christmas is coming early for me. <laughs> like, see, CJ, this is one of the things that I guess has been been quite prominent on, on the new version of the game is is being able to to utilise a really effective low block now. Like, can you sort of like explain to people how it's different from, from previous versions? So I, f- I feel your team hold a better shape than they did in the past, especially if you're going with a uh, back four with a four in front, for instance, or even a back four of uh, two defensive midfielders. I feel the shape that's held and the position they pick up, um, you can trust your team a little bit more to defend from a low position and head everything away, kick everything away like you'd want a team to do. Um, we also have the instructions or kind of trap inside or trap outside or hold the line um, to kind of give you a bit more variety to where you want your position to go. So if you have a lot of bodies in central positions um, and you're a bit weaker in wide areas, you might want to push your position into your central areas to to try and get them to turn over the ball in that way. Or the opposite, if you're playing with really strong fullbacks and wide players that are going to track back and work hard, you might want to push your position into wide areas to um, keep your central areas free and try and get turnovers in those positions. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, I think there's a, there's a thing, isn't it? When you first load it up, it can potentially look a little bit overroaring, potentially now with, with sort of, you know, phrases like trap inside and there's so many more sort of like, it appears to be there's more um, things you can do defensively on your tactics. Mm. Now, if, of course, this is the first time you've seen this screen, Jack, you don't have to press every button, do you? You can just leave things <laughs> standard as like a default and that means that those players are going to, trust their own instincts, am I right? Rather than constantly giving them an instruction? Yeah, I think the, the more specific thing on it is, is it's easier to see your changes after that point, right? So if you were to start with minimal instructions, and let's say you didn't like a particular thing, maybe it's your defensive line, just by changing the defensive line and then playing the match on, you can see how that one isolated change, one, affects your problem that you have, but also, two, how it affects the greater tactic. If you've got three or four things already selected and you start to make two or three changes in one go... You, you might think you're, you're seeing a result of those changes in isolation to your issue, but you don't know really how much that's affecting the rest of the tactics. So I think it's really important to make sure you isolate one, um, one, one specific thing if you can. The other thing I would touch on as well with what CJ said about the, the sort of things that are different this year, I think players are a lot more affected on the ball by pressure behind them than previous years. So I think previous years you would see a player have no idea where the players are behind them they could turn and spin and shoot or spin and do something perfectly if they have pressure behind them now that affects them a lot more that's probably one of the the changes i think we've made that probably just would have been gone way under the radar because 
it may not have been completely obvious. But I think that's that's quite an important one as well. As well as interceptions, you know, have always been, I think, something that we'd love to see more of when your teams are sitting back. So it's always something I think we're, we, we look at and love to see more of as well. Those are two things I would also add on top of that. Mm, absolutely, yeah. As I say, I think we've all been, and I certainly have been guilty of, of pressing everything, hoping for the best, and then going, "Oh, doesn't work." Um, and then, <laughs> as you say, I think this this version is definitely uh, rewarding you for incremental changes. I think, and uh, sort of seeing what you've got, and then just tweaking a little bit, and then moving as we go. Now, um, we are going to do something a little special because it's Christmas, and because of what time of year it is, we're going to have an argument. Um, <laughs> primarily about what a Christmas tree actually is in terms of the formation. So, Jack, you have gone with the Carlo Ancelotti inspired four three two one Christmas tree shape, and CJ is looking at the tra- traditional three four two one. Now, CJ, we'll come to you first, seeing as though it's on the screen. Talk us through it. So, talk us through first of all. Um, the player roles that you're looking at, the uh, tactical style we're going to use, and maybe any sort of like player instructions that may or may not crop up that we might want to have a little look at here. So first of all, I'm loving the theme of the Christmas tree. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this. <laughs> um, we'll we'll stick with the control possession um, style. So a nice balance between Tiki Taka and Gagan Press um, should suit most teams as well. I'm going to make one request. And I'll use wing backs instead of wide midfielders. I think it still fits the Christmas tree shape, but brings a bit more balance to the um, overall team, if that's all right. So um, with our three centre backs, we would want, I'd say, at least two of them as ball playing defenders. So probably the left and right centre back. And then we'll leave the middle centre back as a standard central defender to just head and kick everything away. But we want... We want our team to play out the back. The difference between a ball playing centre back and a central defender, you just get a little bit more carrying the ball at the, out of the back from a ball playing defender. So instead of passing the ball early or going for a big switch, you might see them kind of trying to dribble it out of defence and into midfield areas. And they're the kind of progressions that we want. With our wing backs, we're going to keep them just a standard wing back support. Um, you also have the option of a control, uh, complete wing back. Sorry. Um, which is a much more attacking wing back, very similar to a wing back attack, but it will also roam from position. So you can think maybe Prime Marcelo in his Real Madrid days, or even a Trent Alexander Arnold to some extent, how he plays now, but not so inverted. And um, we'll stay away from the inverted wing backs today, but it is a really good role if you do have a player that suits that skill set. With our two defensive midfielders, I'd think. It's probably a really overlooked position when it comes to building a possession tactic. Um, It's absolutely key. You have players that can take the ball from the defence and start your attack and create your attack. These players will probably get the most touches out of anybody in your team um, when you're playing a tactic building out the back. So we'll go with a deep line playmaker and we want him on support duty. Um, He's going to be our main man. He's going to create most of our attacks. Everything's going to go through him. And then just to bring a bit of balance in the midfield, we'll keep it nice and simple and go with a defensive midfielder on defend duty. Mm. Um, It's always worth having one of the two on defend duty as well, just to kind of bring that balance. Does it matter what side those players are? I know that might sound like a really, really daft question, but does it matter? Or or is it just like a preference as to where your player is or your player's abilities? Or or do you have like a cover for for a defender who goes AWOL possibly? So defending on footedness, it can matter. You might want your left-footed player on the left-hand side um, so he can open up easier, play to the left-hand side. Um, Really, it doesn't really matter. Um, It can depend on your tactical shape as well. So I have my defence midfielder on defend duty on the right-hand side, so I might then push my left wing back onto attack duty. So the balance of the team, um, it stays balanced. So if my left side is higher I don't want my right side to be as high I want my right side to kind of have a bit more balance so there's a variety of ways you can do it but it always will suit your personnel Mm. and those wing backs are starting in in line with those defensive midfielders as well on on your formation aren't you you can move them back to make a back five if you were wanting to park the bus I'm presuming is that right 
Yeah, no, exactly that. Um, I think they perform best maybe as wing backs rather than as kind of a flat back five or even as wide midfielders. But I mean, all three are options. Mm-hmm. Excellent stuff. And then moving slightly further up the pitch, you've got uh, two two advanced midfielders, and well, I'll say advanced midfielders. One, I'll let you. I'll let you explain what you've got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the, the exciting areas, I think this formation actually suits the control possession because we've got the, the two number 10s here. I also like how they're set a bit more wider now on FM23. So mm. you kind of get the impression that they're trying to play between the lines in the half spaces. We'll keep it as it is and go over an advanced playmaker and an attacking midfielder. We'll stick our advanced playmaker on attack duty as well um, just to try and get him really creating. We want a pure number 10 kind of taking the ball on the half turn, looking for the balls in behind, really trying to create in these positions. And the advanced playmaker, it's what you look at as a traditional number 10 role. And an attacking midfielder, very similar to the advanced playmaker, but more of a focus on getting runs into the box. Um, think prime Deli Alley, rather than kind of creating and passing and looking for those kind of incisive balls in behind. And lastly, as our lone striker, our number nine, we'll go with a pressing forward attack. Um, I think when you're using a high pressing tactic, it's really important to have a pressing forward, um, someone that will press from the front, be your first line of defence. An advanced forward will also work with all tactics. It's what you look at as kind of a typical number nine ta- number nine role. But um, a pressing forward is very similar to an advanced forward. The only difference is clues in the name they like to press so if we're playing if we're playing high pressing it's nicely suited to what we're trying to do excellent stuff looks nice looks nicely balanced like in the uh the shape of it and then obviously down the left hand side we've got some instructions here about our in possession our in transition our out of possession um what we think obviously you've got here we've got play out from defense obviously we want to retain that possession and we want to keep the ball we don't want to just ping it forward right yeah that's that's key to what we're trying to do um, depending on your players so if you're using a stronger team you can play with a higher tempo you will keep the ball less and probably have less overall possession but you can bump the tempo up a little bit if you want to trust your players to move the ball a bit quicker um, I think everything else for what we're trying to do can stay with the preset one option you can do as well with pass into space if you do have pace in the wide areas um, if you're using really quick wing backs instead of more technical one to candidate to get switch quick switch passes out to those players in wide areas by passing into space excellent stuff and we're looking here we've got a high uh high line of engagement as well we're looking for a high press and also a high defensive line as well so we're yeah. not concerned about being caught short are we we're no. sort of dictating we're the trying game. to take the game to the opposition um i think that's key if you want to if you want to press high um unless you are um, working on the counter attack tactic, which I'm sure we'll see later on. Um, you want you want to have that high line. You want to press. If you really don't trust the pace on your back three, if you've got maybe some slower defenders, you can drop that back to a standard line and keep your high press line of engagement. It shouldn't be too disconnected, and you can also use the um, the instruction step up more as well um, to really push the game to the opposition and keep that high line where we don't we don't use the offside trap anymore you don't really see teams using the offside trap as much in real life now it's a lot more about keeping the high line and if you manage to play the opposition offside through your high line then that's an added bonus lovely stuff aaron any thoughts this looks great I'm loving it. You know, you know me, press save and try it out later. <laughs> <laughs> high praise, high praise, you know? <laughs> Let me know how it goes. I will. I'm loving it. Brilliant. Okay, so that is Christmas tree number one. Jack, you're going, you got the Ancelotti vibes out, okay? So should we strip it down and we'll build yours as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think in my head, I'm going to recreate loosely that team in my head. I think it's just, it's one of the, there's, there's two teams I think people associate the Christmas tree, at least in recent memory. One, I think it's Ancelotti's team. Who, he did change formation from time to time, but generally people associate it when they played it this way. And then Terry Venables, obviously with England's another one as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to look at the, the Ancelotti one. So the goalkeeper, I'm going to go standard. We're going to keep the goalkeeper the same. Now wing backs, I'm going to have a complete wing back on support at right back and a wing back support at left back. And the reason for that is we don't want our wing backs to start gambling too early and get caught with only two players at the back. 
So that's the uh, the thinking really behind that. And just to give it a bit of balance, to have one of them travelling out from the back. I have my right centre back to be a ball playing defender, and the reason for that is most centre backs in your league are going to be right footed, and generally like to have the right foot when they take a touch to the natural foot. They then travel with the ball out into space as well. Um, look in midfield. I would go deep line make a defend for like the Pirlo row one right in the middle there. Aaron, yep, there we go. Got that. Just to sort of one protect the team a little bit on the counter. Uh, while the teams are further up in the pitch and he'll also then drop in a little bit more as well exactly like that and you can start to move around and be the sort of uh the sort of recycle player as, as we're attacking now this is where we start to get a little more adventurous now i do want to butcher the name of this of this role but the carolera role is going to go to left central fields uh, we're going to put that in there and that's really so that if it was a more advanced role like a box to boxer or like a central attack or anything else i don't want them to make too many runs forward i want them to sort of be to be, uh, be able to, to sort of sit with the midfield and retain the ball because our left attacking midfield player is going to be quite central, quite attacking and really there all the time to, uh, to just exploit and attack. Then the right central midfield, I'm going to go box box midfielder. And the reason for that is I don't want him going too wide because that's where my complete wing back support is going to be. So I want him to sort of stay in a more central zone. Then in the two cam rolls, we're going to have advanced playmaker attack on the right. Now that's going to be our like caca roll. And he is more able to go outside than inside if he wants to, because he's going to have either he's going to have it he's going to have players with him either way. He's either going to have the box box fielder supporting him centrally and supporting him through the middle, or you've got the complete wing back coming out on the wide areas. So either way, he's going to have support, but that way he can sort of maneuver around where he wants to go. And then the left uh, attacking field player is going to just be an attacking fielder attack, and I'd make sure that he doesn't have any. Um, any player instructions to go wide or anything. He's going to stay central and just be there because of the. we're, gonna, we're already going to have two players in the wide zone, so he's got to stay in the middle and be really close there. And for the striker role, just to be different to CJ, I'll go poacher and go proper in Zaggy. And <laughs> just going to stay up there, stay central, <laughs> running behind, don't do anything else. So you got to do. So you got to do striker, just running behind and be, uh, <laughs> and be a threat. And that's, that's how I would go about it, generally, yeah. Oh, nice. excellent. So again, like, so similar, a similar vibe, but obviously the roles change things up a lot. Now, a carrier is 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 a a role I've used sporadically, and I think maybe some of our listeners might be in the same uh, boat. So, Aaron, you've got it up on the screen there. Just let's just read out the carrier as to, to to the description of it because it might be a role that some people go, I've never heard of a carrier before. <laughs> well, they are a shuttler is a supporting role more often than not utilized as part of a midfield three or as two central midfielders in a diamond midfield. It is the job of these shuttlers to cover lateral areas of the pitch and link the defensive midfield area with the attacking midfield area. This is what separates the Carrileros from a box-to-box -box midfielder, as they are not expected to shuttle between boxes, but merely between the lines of the midfield. And they are only available with a support duty. Nice. Okay. My reading Excellent. voice. My reading voice. Your reading voice is beautiful. <laughs> Take all the time <laughs> <of> the class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what what I like as well, Jack, is obviously is, as well. You've got that. You've got this this flat three midfield. It's a very flat midfield, isn't it? Like where so your DLP is in that central, uh, almost on what well, I would refer to as on on the halfway like the halfway line. Uh, where if you look at it on your tactic screen there, uh, as opposed to CJ's, maybe the, the DLP sits a little deeper. Um, so again, is that are you, are you pushing everybody forward? Because I noticed you're actually playing on a on a cautious mentality as well with this counter attack system. So. What's the thinking for having the DLP a little bit higher up the pitch? Um, I think, one, the shape, because it wouldn't look so much like a Christmas tree. Uh, if it was any lower than that, that's, that's one of the reasons. Um, you haven't seen my Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that, that's the main reason. And it's also because, like, if, if I was going with Ancelotti's recreation, for an example, I would start off with this, then you would tweak from here is how I would do it, for example, yeah. right? It's, um, and also, because if you drop him, it'll affect the two midfield players ahead of him a little bit in the way that they're positioned. So I'd rather have it set like that first. Uh, also, I, I just think that, that because you want a slightly lower mentality and because you're going to be building up um, quite aggressively, I just think the idea of having them a little more aggressive in supporting the attack, not so much him, but the players next to him. So if I have to have them in the same line, rather than be you know, higher up than, than too low for this exact experiment, if you will. Mm -hmm. Excellent stuff. And talk me through the porcher as well. Now, a porcher, a role I used to, I used to use it quite a lot, actually, a few, a few uh, versions ago. But I feel as though it's taken a bit of an evolution recently recently gone mm -hmm. in the days of, of Porcher being your, your sort of your Francis Jeffers fox in the box six yard merchant <laughs> like Porcher's now developed is that right Aaron? Well I I believe so I don't want to say factually just, <laughs> just, just from my voice 
<laughs> just with my field, I feel them. I don't want to say they're more part of the game. They're not exactly dropping deep and linking up play, but they're also you can notice them not on the pitch. They're not it just just out of the game completely, and they are very very useful in stretching defensive lines. I feel as well. Polch is staying, just literally staying on defenses. It creates gaps and spaces. So for this tactic, for an example, just imagine the Polcher lining himself up against two central defenders, and then you've got your two number tens. They could be floating in the space between the defence and the midfield. So a poacher, I feel, in FM23, very, very useful. Mm. CJ, confirm, deny? Oh, no, most definitely. Um, you have the right player with the right... <laughs> 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 Don't worry, you, I'm, I'm in agreement. Right player with the right skill set, it, it can be deadly. Um, I just want to touch on um, Carrillero as well, just to jump mm-hmm. back to that one where you raised it earlier. It's a massively kind of underused and underrated role. I tried to sneak it into some of the tactical styles presets just to show it some love and get it used. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think the way Jack used it is perfect. Um, Look at it as a box-to-box midfielder that will defend left to right rather than forward to back, um, especially in the midfield three on one of the side areas. If you have an attacking full-back and an advanced midfielder ahead of him, <clears throat> sorry, um, attacking midfielder and an advanced midfielder ahead of him, he can really kind of cover those wide spaces um, to stop you getting counter-attacked and kind of give your team a bit more balance. It's not as fancy as the name suggests, is a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what? I've loved this. This has been fantastic, genuinely. Like, you think you know a Christmas tree formation, but I genuinely think I've learned something this afternoon. So thank you very much, uh, fellas, for popping in and discussing this with us. Uh, CJ Ramson, thank you very much. Jack Serres, thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>